Hey there, Jim Johnson for AccentHelp.com, and we are finishing up our tour of the vowels with regards to American speech, generic and sort of speech. And we're winding it up with what J.C. Wells calls the comma vowel, what is commonly called the schwa, or I wish it were called the schwa, because then it would make its own sound. Uh, uh. It's the sound that I commonly make. Uh, in response to questions. Uh, yeah. So this schwa sound, okay, this is the one that tends to occur in unstressed syllables. So that's why J.C. Wells uses the word comma. Uh, 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 uh. It's that really unstressed sound. It can feel like it's identical to the uh sound, the strut. And we could hear this in a word like a uh, Above, abrupt. So we can hear perhaps a slight distinction between those for, for American speakers. You'll tend to hear a bigger distinction between them for some speakers. Like I mentioned this a bit when I was talking about the strut. You can see where I talk a little bit about Boston and New Orleans, how they may have a tendency to make it more of a true turned V instead of becoming schwa-like. But the schwa is this big neutral sound. In fact, I would suggest in many ways, if you have an unstressed syllable, try to make it a schwa. And if it works as a schwa, that's great. It's really reductive. It's really reduced. And there's not significant changes here, I will say. There are accents where there's a tendency to go towards this for like pretty much all unstressed syllables. South African, for example, there's a tendency to go in South Africa. South Africa, for lots of, lots of syllables that might other, otherwise be um, like the word um, uh, invest, might for some speakers become invest, almost an un, invest. You're going, to in, you're going to invest, invest in that. So that's a little strong, but oftentimes those unstressed syllables in that accent will go towards schwa, even though in many other accents it would be a small cap I, that low, that uppercase I that's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit shorter. So it will happen in that. Um, what I will say one big impact on the schwa is that many ESL accents, you end up with people basically trying to teach, treat English as though it's phonemic, as if the spelling tells you how it's pronounced, which is like a nightmare. English is a nightmare in that way. And so they may sound out and make a something that would commonly be said as an unstressed syllable, as a schwa perhaps, like absurd, becoming something more like ab, like something more distinct. It wants to be like recognized and more heavily invested in and given a more distinct vowel sound. So that will commonly happen is avoidance of this sound in many ESL accents, especially the stronger that the accent is, you will end up with that. Otherwise, there's not a lot to be said about the schwa. Now, there's more to be said about it when it gets noted as the schwa with this little sort of wingding on it, this thing that I could also sort of simplify to just be this corner sort of thing, but I want to use that term corner for a different diacritic. That's when we turn it into the vowel form of an R. Right, so that's that's a whole separate discussion of vowel plus R or vowel versions of R. So the schwa, there's not much to say about it. Uh... For more info on accents, you can check out accenthelp.com.